is it the most wonderful time of the year or the most stressful time of the year? The answer to that question just might hinge on what you can accomplish over the next few weeks. We're talking church marketing at Christmas time on this October edition of the MyCom Church Marketing Podcast. Thank you to everybody for listening. My name is Dan Wunderlich. I'm a United Methodist pastor, and I'm recording this in late September. And if you're following along in real time, it is now October. You might be pushing toward or recovering from your trunk or treat or fall festival. Thanksgiving is about a month away, and you know that when Santa arrives at the end of the parade at noon on that Thursday, Christmas is here. Now, of course, We still have Advent to go in our liturgical calendar in the church, but the world has moved on to Christmas. And with that shift comes the busyness. Everything and everyone gets busy. School, work, personal life, and of course, church gets busy too. Not only are there all the extra events, but preparing for Christmas and all that comes with it usually requires more work than a normal Sunday. And here's the thing. It is stressful and tiring, but it's also usually worth it. Christmas offers such an incredible opportunity to reach people in our community. So we want to give it the time it deserves and give God and our community our best. But when is all that extra time and energy going to come? When are we going to spend it? Where does it come from? For me, most years, it unfortunately comes in longer days at the office when I really wish I were just home baking Christmas cookies or watching one of those vintage Christmas TV specials with my daughter after school. Or it might come in the form of an hour or two on what is supposed to be my day off. Now, if you're like me and that sounds familiar, I invite you to join me in my goal this year. Spend some of that time and energy now over the next few weeks, late October, early November, before Thanksgiving. Of course, you can't do absolutely everything needed to get ready for Christmas, but you can do quite a few things now and also lay a foundation that will make what has to be done later much easier. And that's what we're going to focus on today. So turn down your thermostat, put on some Nat King Cole or the Charlie Brown Christmas soundtrack and get yourself in the mood. Let's start cranking through this church marketing Christmas checklist. We'll cover five main areas, and in each area, I'll offer some guiding questions or key tasks you can accomplish, and then if you're really feeling up for it, each area also has a bonus challenge. Area number one, discern and or translate the Christmas theme. Now, let's just be honest, unless you are one of our amazing listeners who pulls double duty as the pastor and also the church marketing person, this is likely out of your hands, at least to a degree. And no matter who you are, the pastor of your church, which may or may not be you, may or may not be good at planning ahead. One year, I had my Christmas theme in March. Last year, I came up with it in November. And one year, I'm not proud of this one. I was so far behind and looking back, probably a little burned out that I told my team the Advent themes were just going to be the four themes of the Advent candles and the Christmas Eve theme was going to be Christmas. It all worked out because God is amazing, but that's not how I would recommend going about it. So if you haven't gotten direction from your pastor or the worship planning team yet, now would be a great time to check in with them. Hey, just wanted to see what you were thinking. Do you have a series, a theme, a controlling idea, illustration or story, or even just a vibe? And even if it's not fully fleshed out yet, they may be able to give you enough to get started. Or what they give you might spark some ideas that you can offer back as suggestions. But of course, at the end of the day, if you aren't the pastor or director of worship, your job might not be to create the theme, but it is absolutely your job to help translate the theme outside of the context of the sermon and the worship service. Speaking as a pastor and weekly preacher myself, I obviously do try to plan themes and series that have relevance, can generate interest, and inspire an action or response. But most of the time, I'm focused on generating those things within the context of the sermon itself, building an arc, building a narrative or an argument that, that points us or moves us in a direction. Part of our job as church communicators is to think about how this theme resonates with someone who encounters us outside of that context. A call to action that might make sense at the end of a 20 to 30 minute sermon might not make quite as much sense or have the same impact for someone who's just scrolling Facebook. So while, of course, we need to be working out sermon series graphics and the general look of Christmas marketing and materials, which we will get to, We need to first try to see how we can connect the Christmas theme to the real world. Why should anyone care about what we're doing or talking about this Christmas? Now, of course, the answer is because it's all about Jesus. 
but I trust you all understand what I mean and are nodding along when I say this. Just saying that you are celebrating the birth of Jesus is not enough to stop someone and catch their attention in today's world. So, what's a two to three sentence summary of the Christmas theme or message that can stand on its own and will make sense to someone who hasn't engaged yet with your church or hasn't listened to any of the sermons? And if that's not hard enough, here's your bonus challenge. Can you reduce that two to three sentence summary down to a one sentence summary or one phrase? Now, don't be afraid to ask your pastor for help on this. The two to three sentence summary, it will help guide you. It might even make great copy for a social post, but boiling it down to one sentence or one phrase, particularly if it's memorable, that's what goes on the Instagram image, the invite card, or maybe even the t-shirt. More on that later. Area number two is to define the roadmap and the entry points into the theme. Marketing is largely about offering solutions to problems. Whether you go the old school route of listing features and benefits, or you take the modern story-based approach, it's still about solving a problem. That problem could be as simple as, where do I take my family for Christmas Eve worship where we'll be welcome and my kids don't need to be perfect silent angels? Or it could be a deeper problem, like, how do I find a sense of peace in the midst of a crazy, busy, noisy, combative world? The hope is that you've accomplished some of this in that last section, but now it's time to get specific and practical. And remember, your marketing and the sermons, they absolutely work together, but they are not the same thing. People are in an entirely different headspace if they're listening to a sermon versus scrolling Facebook. So how might we take the question or challenge that's presented in the sermon and frame it for a social post? If you are posting this question, not to your church's page, but to your personal page, asking for perspective and feedback from your friends and family, how would you phrase it there? This is particularly where we need to try to see through the eyes of someone who may only come to church at Christmas or has never come at all. What's the entry point for someone who's new to faith or the church? What are words or concepts in our Christmas theme that we might take for granted because they're familiar to us, but aren't clear to someone who doesn't hear or speak the language of the church? What problems are we wrestling with and what answer might the church offer that doesn't require some foundational pre-knowledge of the Bible? And this relates to my next question. What resources do people need every year that you can then tie into this year's theme? Last December, my church did Facebook Live broadcasts from our church kitchen, where we were prepping easy Christmas recipes, decorating cookies, making cinnamon rolls. We also did some live broadcasts with our children's director, where we did simple Christmas crafts. The recipe or the craft might not have tied into the theme, but I hosted them alongside the staff member or church member who was doing the project or cooking the recipe, and we talked about the theme of the week. We also created and shared a list of questions that could serve as conversation starters at the family dinner table for the days leading up to Christmas. Some were quote-unquote religious and tied into our theme, but some were just for fun. And also, since we are theoretically beginning to work this out in late October or early to mid-November, we can take a step or two backward in the thought process. We can begin to ask what problem or challenge actually comes before the one we're talking about at Christmas. Is there a simpler or more surface-level version of the issue we can dig into first for a couple weeks, maybe during Advent, and then guide our people into a place where they are ready to hear the Christmas message? Rather than asking people to make one big leap, can you break the Christmas theme down into a couple smaller steps and roll them out in the coming weeks? That leads us to our bonus challenge number two. Can you reach your intended audience at least once before Christmas? For example, can you run a Facebook ad for a week in November? Now, the goal of this ad would not be to invite them to an event or even Sunday morning worship. Rather than asking for something, give them something. Provide a service or a resource, maybe a short video devotion or one of those cookie recipe videos. Or maybe it's an image saying that you're praying for the community through the end of the year and you make the call to action button the message us option and ask for prayer requests via Facebook Messenger. The goal is to get yourself on your community's radar so that the Christmas invite isn't the first thing they've seen from you since Easter. Area number three, choose your marketing channels. I know you are itching to get to the creative part either because it's fun or you know just how many designs you're going to need to produce by the time Christmas Eve gets here. But remember, we are taking the time to lay a foundation that will serve us throughout the whole process. And this kind of research, analysis, and planning are key. 
because while we can work up some general design and just apply it across platforms and channels, that doesn't always lead to the most effective execution. But if we know what we're designing for ahead of time, it can help guide the process. And what we are designing actually begins with who we are designing for. Of course, it's always our hope and prayer that everyone in our community would want to come to our church and feel welcome at our church, especially at Christmas. But one of the hard and fast rules of marketing is that when you try to reach everyone, you reach no one. Even giant brands with broad appeal like Nike or Coca-Cola or Apple still have target demographics they're aiming for. They might have a bunch of them, but they don't try to reach all of them at once. They know who they're trying to reach in each specific campaign on each specific channel. So who is your Christmas service aimed at? Who do you most want to see respond? Who do you think is most receptive? If your church family really wants to reach families with kids, that should look different than if you're trying to reach young singles or senior citizens. And I should also note, marketing towards families doesn't mean young singles or senior citizens won't come or feel welcome. You aren't saying who can and can't come, but you're communicating your values. And there are plenty of people out there who might not have kids or whose kids are grown, but they too value a church that prioritizes reaching and caring for families with kids. The same as vice versa. Once you have your target or small handful of targets, the next question is, how do you reach them? What channels did they use and respond to? You're not going to reach senior citizens on TikTok, and you're not going to reach young singles on Facebook. And once you determine what channels or platforms might work, you then have to ask what breaks through on those platforms. The main dividing point for this particular moment, fall 2022, is image versus video. Because of the rise of TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram, and even YouTube are artificially inflating short-form video. Find some people who are already in your church, who fall within the group you're wanting to reach, and ask them what breaks through. What things did they actually take the time to watch? Now is also the time to check your marketing budget. If you've done your research and you decide that paid ads or boosted posts or something like a mailer to a radius around your church is the way to go, make sure you have the resources to do these well, and if not, ask for them. Also, if there are things that can be bought or reserved early, do it now. If you need something printed like a mailer or invite card, make sure you design and get those printed at one of those affordable online printers before they're all bogged down with everyone's Christmas card orders and the delivery dates start slipping. And for those things that can't be reserved early, like maybe a specific date for an every door direct mail piece through the United States Postal Service, set a reminder on your phone or your to-do list program to make sure you don't miss an important date. Okay, here's bonus challenge number three. Research shows the most effective form of church marketing is personal invitation and word of mouth. Someone in your church inviting someone else to come has a significantly greater chance of not only that person coming, but them sticking around because the invitation or the point of engagement was personal rather than just some piece of content on social media. So for bonus points, what will make someone in your congregation actually want to share about your Christmas services or events? What things would they be proud to give to someone else? What things would they be proud uh, or want to share on their social profiles? Thinking about marketing through your current members is as important as thinking about how you might market through your Facebook page or other social channels. All right, you've waited long enough. Let's get to the fun stuff. Area number four, choose a design direction and aesthetic as early as you can. When you ask for that sermon series info or Christmas theme, be sure to follow up with a few questions related to vibe. Are we going bright and cheerful or subdued and reflective? Whimsical or serious? Informal or classy? Modern or vintage? Is this series aimed at the head, the heart, the hands, the soul? And going back to your research, what kind of vibe does the target demographic respond to? What brands or influencers do they look to and follow? They won't have rolled out their Christmas materials yet, and the goal is certainly is not to copy them, but to understand them. What emotions are they tapping into? In my area, Chip and Joanna Gaines and the Magnolia Empire continues to be influential. And if you flip through their magazine, you will see that virtually every article begins with some measure of nostalgia. Is that something I can factor into my design and marketing? 
Before you jump into that blank Photoshop document and start designing, spend some time pulling together images or links or color palettes that inspire you and point you in the direction you want to go. Some places to start include Pinterest, Behance.net, or even a stock photo site like Unsplash. Scroll through some free Google fonts. Even if you're more likely to turn to a church graphics site you subscribe to or can purchase individual images from, or you're going to purchase assets from a place like Creative Market, having a clear sense of where you want to go aesthetically will help guide you and keep you on track and, and lead to not just picking the first thing that jumps out or the best of what's available. You can always come back to the best of what's available, but if it isn't what you're looking for, and you know that because you know what you're looking for, it might lead you to check a few other places first. All right, design ninjas, here's challenge number four. Just as we talked in area two about creating a two-step marketing plan or two-step messaging plan, a progression that leads people into the Christmas theme, can you create a design progression? Can you define a look or a vibe that can work for Advent, leaning into that season and its theme and its unique role and importance, but make it so that it's also cohesive with your Christmas design? Perhaps the layouts and the fonts are the same, but the imagery and the colors you use shift. Perhaps Advent is darker and more reflective. Christmas is brighter and more celebratory, but they still look like they're related. Now, this is definitely a pro-level move, but that's what makes it a bonus challenge. Our fifth and final area is to apply design across the needed resources. Of course, the final step is to go ahead and just start knocking out as much as you can. You already know some of what needs to be made, sermon series, graphics, invite cards, maybe a banner to hang by the road outside. You might also revamp all of your in-service graphics and slides, you know, the welcome slides, the giving info slides, the follow us on social media slide, the thanks for coming slide, those kinds of things. You or your pastor might even be able to, to throw on a Christmas sweater and film some video resources now. And for those things that perhaps can't be made yet because the information isn't available yet, like a compelling quote from one of the sermons that hasn't been preached yet, much less written, you can make templates. This is where we're setting ourselves up with that foundation for success in the future. Think of the things you might need, create a mock-up or a template you can easily edit. Trust me, your future self will thank you. And now it's time for our final bonus challenge. If budget allows, think about what special touches might elevate the experience. Either the ambiance of your space, maybe it's signage, decorations, displays, or the experience of the guests, maybe some stickers or some other kind of giveaway. Or the one I'm really thinking about this year, what can you give to your team and your volunteers to make them feel special? Here, we might be talking about t-shirts or lanyards or a travel coffee mug. Now, again, this is budget permitting, but recognizing and rewarding your volunteers, especially when they're serving despite being just as busy as everyone else, this kind of thing will pay off well into the future. So to recap, your five pre-Christmas season Christmas to-do list areas are one, discern and or translate the theme. Two, define the roadmap and entry points into the theme. Three, choose your marketing channels. Four, choose a design direction or aesthetic. And five, apply that design across the needed resources. And now listeners, we want to hear from you. What am I missing from this Christmas checklist that you've been able to prep ahead of time? Any other time-saving hacks that have helped you stress less at Christmas time? Email us at podcast at umcom.org and we just might share your thoughts or recommendations on a future episode. And you can, of course, use that email, podcast at umcom.org, to send us any feedback or topic suggestions you have for the show. We always love hearing from you. And as always, the easiest way to support this show and help other church communicators like yourself find it is by sharing this episode with your friends and colleagues and by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening to us right now. And did you know that United Methodist Communications has celebrated over 80 years of ministry? Your support ensures that the latest denominational news, dynamic stories, and informative articles will continue to connect our global community. Make a tax-deductible donation today at resourceumc.org slash giveumcom. Thanks again for listening to the MyCom Church Marketing Podcast.